I'm writing a novel about total permanent world peace and prosperity, and I would like guidance from you. It's fiction, yes? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are clever, but we didn't know we were that clever. <laughs> the reason that we ask that is for a deeper reason than you know, and that is in this world in which you are creating peace, in this book world in which you are creating it. Are you wanting to get everyone to want the same thing? In, in studying your work, I've looked at what I understand you to be saying to focus on solution rather than problems. And so as I see my high school friend who became my philosophy professor said, if you can think of it, you can create it. And so my sense is that it is creatable at some time in the distant future. And so my vision is to write a novel of history of the future coming back uh, about how it was created in order to um, facilitate that vision. Let us give you the picture from broader perspective of what is required in order to have that which you are asking for. Your friend is right. If this time-space reality has the wherewithal to inspire a desire within you, it has the ability to deliver the desire that has been inspired. That is absolutely accurate. But there are a number of things that we think are necessary to understand as a basis of this before you can even begin to proceed. First, and most important, is that we've never seen two of you whose world view is the same. And so when you decide that this world that you are creating will be a world that is peaceful, what we think you're really saying is, it's a world made up of billions of individuals who have come to understand that they are extensions of source energy and that the larger part of them is calling them toward what they individually want. And they have become so aware of their ability through focus to flow with the stream that they are now able to live what Jesus and so many other taught, which is unconditional love, which means I can be in connection with who I am regardless of the conditions that surround. So as one, we've said to many of you that if you could understand that the way you feel in any moment, your alignment with source or not alignment with source is contingent only upon the vibration of your being in any moment, which means the thoughts that you are thinking in any moment. As you understand that your alignment or misalignment is about your direction of thought, and you are therefore able to leave everybody else out of it. In other words, you're not saying, as most of the world says today, even your parents, even parents to children, teachers to students, spouses to each other, friends with each other, almost everybody is saying, I feel better when you do this than when you do that. So stop doing that and start doing that and then I'll have peace. And we say, yeah, you'll have peace, but it's a very conditional peace. It's conditional upon somebody else doing something that they may or may not want to do. And when your peace or your happiness or your connection is contingent upon any other conditions having to be changed, now you're out of balance with the laws of the universe. So this world that you're describing really would be where we said to Esther when we were describing this to her early on and she said, oh, Abraham, you don't expect me to tell this to the world. And we said, no, sweet girl, we're just telling you. Because your happiness is only about your alignment with who you are. And you have to reach the place where you're able to find alignment no matter what anybody else is doing, which means you've got to gain control of what you focus upon which means you will then gain control of your vibrational output, which means you will then gain control of your vibrational point of attraction, which means you will then gain control of your world. So 
If you want to then expand that out from one person to everybody on the planet or to the place where the majority of the planet or even the leaders of the planet or even those that are the makers of the wars upon the planet, if you want to expand that out, then that would mean that each of them would have to come into that knowing that the way they feel that their joy is contingent only upon something that they have utter control about. And as one after another, after another, after another lets go of the oars and goes with the flow and comes into alignment with who they are, now it is a cooperative world. Now it is a look at the advantages that we are offering to each other rather than you are utilizing the resources that I need, therefore I need to destroy you so that I will have enough. The world as it exists today in the mind of human for the most part, of course, there are exceptions, but the imbalance that you are feeling is that it is a shortage mentality. It is a lack mentality. It is that there is not enough, and therefore we must squabble over the resources of oil and of land and of love. And so as you begin to understand that if you could write your book from the standpoint of your quest for world peace, and how much you wanted it, and how hard you worked at it. Make it detailed and dramatic, and then end it by finding your peace. And then describe your world through the eyes of someone who's in alignment, and find out that that really is the quest that you're looking for. And if one does it, then maybe another, and another, and another. But never, ever ask somebody else to want the same thing that you want. And that's why a few years ago someone brought flyers to one of these gatherings wanting everyone to get together at a certain time. Even though there are a lot of different time zones, that was illogical, but and focus upon world peace. And they asked what we thought about it, and we said, we don't think it's any of your business. We don't think world peace is your business. We think your personal alignment is, in which case you will live in a peaceful world because your point of attraction can't be anything else. But the problem with demanding world peace is that what you are always saying is, I've got a view of world peace through my eyes, and your lifestyle doesn't fit into it, so off the planet you go. <laughs> Not what any of you had in mind when you came. Not one of you said, let's go forth into this expansive variety of contrast and let's take all of the ideas that exist and whittle it down to one good idea. Not one of you from your broader non-physical perspective saw that as something even wanted, let alone something that could be achieved. Instead, you said, let's take the ideas that exist and out of them, from my personal perspective, I will hone a new preference. And Source says, and when you do, we will become it and call you to it. And you said, works for me. You, not one of you said, but what about the others? Will they agree with me? If you had asked that question, Source would have said, anything that anyone wants, they can become. But it is not that people want different things that is the reason for the wars that you see upon the planet. It's that hardly anybody you know comes in alignment with self. And when they're not in alignment with self, they feel awful, and then they blame everybody they can think of as a reason for not feeling good. It'll be a good book. Thank you. <laughs>